All right, here we go. Some people like to drink coffee, some people like to drink tea. I gotta have my LaCroix. Cheers. Whoa. So now that the Lotus Exige is all done, all the parts are on it, the work has come to a halt, etc. The last remaining question that remains is, how much did it actually cost to get the car to where it is today? Now, making a video like this is a bit uncomfortable for me because I don't typically like to talk about dollars like this, especially not dollars that I personally spent, but there are a lot of mixed signals with a specific topic and the best way to dispel all that and clear the air is to really break things down detail by detail, which I will do. And hopefully this will bring some more appreciation to what this stuff actually takes and remove any guesstimations or estimates that go into it and show you exactly what it actually takes. And more importantly, I know you guys want to know. So definitely the scariest thing about modding or building a car is a creeper effect that can come with it because you're taking things piece by piece versus the entire picture. So then things can get out of hand very, very fast. So this is why it's all the more important to stick to a budget and also accommodate and account for every single thing that you do. And also the process of buying aftermarket parts and upgrading yourself is probably the most inefficient and expensive route that you can take. Secondly, there are so many levels to this type of stuff and it all depends on how far down the rabbit hole that person's willing to go and also how much attention to the details that person has. Because again, the details are what needs to be stressed. And every single inconspicuous line item on a model list needs to be acknowledged and recognized because that single item can be the difference of thousands of dollars. Now, circling this all back, I initially chose to buy the Exige because specifically I wanted a car that did not have to mod that much and the Exige looked like a factory race car. It was well appointed. But lo and behold, once I got into my hands, I started poking holes at it. I realized that it was not perfect by any stretch of the means. Uh, there were definitely things that had to be improved and I couldn't sit still knowing these type of facts. So as I continued to research and dig in, I realized that there was actually a pretty major support backing the Lotus and also a number of well-engineered and excellent products available on the market. So now knowing the potential that can be reached with this platform in my usual fashion, I couldn't leave that on the table and I knew at that point that there could only be one outcome. So anyway, enough of that, let's go ahead and get over to the car itself and get this party started. Okay, I think this will do. I found some random empty industrial park. Let's go ahead and get started. First, before we get into adding up all of the upgrades, we have to start with the baseline of what the car itself costs. So again, this is a 2007 Exige S with only 12,000 original miles. So this car by itself, complete stock, would be valued at about $50,000. So let's go ahead and add that to the counter right here in this bottom right corner. Now let's go ahead and go big right out the gates, starting with this Benetech dry carbon wing on the back of the trunk. So this thing is directly from Benetech Japan. I had to find someone that actually spoke Japanese to go and order it for me. The whole process was made to order. Uh, it took about three months and then plus delivery. So all included with the shipping costs from Japan, which were pretty significant due to its size, uh, was about $4,000. Plus I had to get these stands down here painted this nice satin black. Uh, from a painter locally here. That thing was about another $250 to paint the stands. So starting off in the front, I have... Yo, what up? Sorry for the interruption. I'll keep this very brief. Just a quick word from our sponsors. Again, that's a lie. I'm not actually sponsored. Let's just, uh, you know, ignore that fact. But I just want to bring to your attention what I'm holding in my hand. So this thing right here is a crystallized rock called an agate. And it's actually a coaster. Whenever somebody comes over to my house, they're like, damn, Eric, what is that thing? It looks super fancy. That thing looks awesome. I'm like, yeah, it is. And guess what? It's a coaster. So bring that LaCroix over here, put it on top of this thing. And I typically don't like sharing my trade secrets like this or my style cues, but because you're watching this video, I'm going to tell you all about this. Now, do you want even better? In the description below, I'm going to give you a link directly to Amazon to where you can actually purchase a set of these yourself. It's cheap, level up, uh, thank me later. Now back to the video. GT race front uprights, which are the uh, billet pieces behind the hubs, and they actually hold the hubs themselves. That's from Elise Parts. So I made a very big order from Elise Parts in the UK. So that included the uprights in the front. It also included the ultimate GT race uprights in the back, and they also have mounting points for a dual caliper setup like I have here. The front uprights were 1250. 
the rear uprights were 1700 and also to add on to the rear uprights i had to buy lower ball joint mounts that was 140 and the rear uprights also have a double shear mount for the toe link which you can kind of see in there that horizontal bar that's a very common piece of break on lotuses the uniball toe link kit back there was about 360 and then back to the front i had lightweight steering arms that's 140 and i also had to buy brand new exige wheel bearings for all four corners because i was changing all of the uprights so that amounted to about 545 dollars and then the big ones are going to be the ap racing slash release parts uh, floating two-piece rotors like you can see here so the front rotors cost about eleven hundred dollars and the back ones cost about a thousand sixty five and then just behind the rotors are going to be the quantum racing one zero coilovers i can't really get a good shot of it but of course all four corners have the quantum coilovers those were about 1830 and if we take a closer look at the rear setup back here you'll also notice that my front caliper is now sitting at the back and then for the front i went ahead and purchased this oem ap racing cup caliper uh, from a 2010 exige so that caliper was about thousand dollars for the pair of course and then for the brake pads, I'm using G-Lock R8 brake pads. Those were about $360 for all four. And now specific to the smaller brake caliper back here, which used to be my stock OEM rear caliper, now it's only for an e-brake. And those rear pads, I also changed out with brand new OEM pads, which were $85. And then supporting the calipers front and back are going to be Goodridge braided brake lines. So those stainless lines cost $140. And I also have silicone hoses for the engine bay setup back there and also the connecting points to the radiator up front. So those hoses cost $320. And then this Koyo HH aluminum radiator, that costs $400. And then for the engine, I have NGK Iridium spark plugs. They were $40. Now going back to the front, I know I'm kind of hopping back and forth and all over the place, uh, but this carbon fiber shroud for the radiator under here, you can barely even see it. But that thing is indeed carbon fiber and that thing was $400. And down here on the side, I have these Allard Plus slash AGT side skirts and 12 weave carbon fiber. They were made by Shine Auto Project and they were about $750. Coming around here to the back and please pour in the dust on this car. It's a bit dirty. I've been kind of killing bugs lately. Haven't had a chance to wash it. Uh, but this exhaust, this sweet looking thing here is fully titanium. It's from Arc Ray Japan. It cost me $1,500 for this cat back exhaust. And then connected to the arc ray exhaust is going to be the stainless steel decap pipe which then falls into my dmc ultimate 2zz stainless steel header and that header and decap pipe cost me eighteen hundred dollars now this front steel tow hook right here is made by jee japan and this kit cost me 105 dollars let's talk about the wheels for a second here huh these are some lotus cup 240r forged cup wheels uh 16s in the front 17s in the rear the full set cost me about $3,200 plus refinishing them. They're in a the super sweet satin black finish. They're very dirty right now, but they do look good once it's cleaned up. And then I had to put on my usual Project Kicks uh, lug nuts with the swivel heads. So those lug nuts for the entire set, they are R26 low mount lug nuts. They were 155. And obviously to run the Project Kicks lug nuts, I did a stud conversion on these cars because they have wheel bolts from factory. And the studs I'm using are ARP, and those cost me $155. And then the tires that I have wrapped on these wheels are Advan AO52 R compounds. It was about $950 for an entire set. Just taking a look at this interior really quick, I have, of course, on the steering column, the Workspell Short Boss Hub, $250. The Workspell GTC Wrap Fix uh, Flip Up Hub, that was $405. And then just in front of the wrap fix hub, we have the Sparco P300 suede steering wheel, uh, very similar to the ones that come in the cup cars. So this wheel cost me $250. So the most prominent thing that you're gonna be looking at is of course going to be this new enlarged bar and plate intercooler in a nice space gray anodized uh, finish. This thing is by Really Light Stuff. It's their Mark II intercooler. That intercooler alone is $1,260. Behind the intercooler, we have this carbon fiber three chamber shroud, which then leads to the supplemental ducting. The shroud itself cost me $625. And then the entire supplemental side intercooling kit, which includes the air duct tubing that you see here, which then goes into some more diverted ducts behind this side sill thing. So that whole thing cost me $335. Uh, these boost tubes, these intercooler tubes are actually lightweight mandrel bent tubes far lighter than the cast stock ones 
and those tubes cost me about $255. And then if you kind of look below the intercooler, you can see a carbon fiber heat shield. So that heat shield was $300. And then we have these nice computer fans on the back side of the intercooler. I'm just kidding, these are small fans. Uh, they are $120. And then down here in the abyss on the right side of the car is going to be the front of the engine where all the pulleys are. And one of the pulleys is going to be a really light stuff, underdriven three inch supercharger pulley. And that thing cost me 175 bucks and then back here on the engine bay as part of my outer plus japan order i picked up their oil cap and this oil cap cost me 80 dollars uh, you can't really see it but over here is going to be my new fill neck assembly it's actually a completely aluminum motorsports grade pro alloy made tough jug fill neck you can kind of see the front side here so this is the tough jug aperture or whatever you want to call that so unfortunately because this was made for uk cars i had to get it fabricated to re-angle the actual fill neck itself. Uh, the fabrication work cost me $150 and the fill neck itself cost me $300. There was also a filler hose I had to buy from Lotus. That thing was $120. And then connected to that is my new Pro Alloy 52 liter increased capacity and baffled aluminum fuel tank, which was $760. And if you look here, this hood prop is actually on a different bracket and that bracket is from Pro Alloy. The bracket itself is $60 because you have to use this to kind of uh, position up the prop to clear the larger and deeper intercooler. So for the engine, I installed a complete Torque 300 tune from BOE Fab, and that includes all the supplemental mods, including, of course, the injectors. These are Bosch EV14 upgrade injectors, 265. This pressurized NASCAR-style aluminum swirl header tank for the coolants, $490. Transmission studs, $15. BOE catch can right here. That catch can was $200. And then just back there in the darkness somewhere is the new ITG upgraded cold air intake with a three inch math. Uh, that entire intake setup cost me $400. And then inside the fuel tank is an upgraded fuel pump to keep up with the new horsepower needs. And that's a Deech Works 265. I swear to God. It's a Deech Works 265 liters per hour fuel pump and that cost me $150. Final piece of the Torque 300 puzzle is going to be the tune itself. So the ECU sits back there on the firewall. Uh, I had to ship that out to BOE Fab and the tune cost me $850 plus overnight shipping, which was additional. Forgot the shipping costs, so we'll leave that out. Now just down here is gonna be the transmission and I of course upgraded the clutch as well with an ACT HVSS clutch kit that cost 325 bucks. It also has a lightweight aluminum, the Danza flywheel, $335. And then to tie all that together are some ARP flywheel bolts at $50. And then of course on the bottom of the engine is going to be my new O-ringed increased capacity and baffled oil pan. Uh, that is from BOE Fab as well. That was 555. This diffuser down here is a dry carbon twill weave reverie diffuser from the UK. This three element diffuser cost me $1,200. And then to hold up the diffuser and also the license plate is this nice bracket here. This bracket was hundred bucks. All right, so here's kind of a better view of the header. And I also have exhaust studs from ARP and those were $85. And then just down here somewhere is going to be the front engine mount. And inside of that, I have a sport insert from InnoKinetic just to kind of stiffen things up and get a better shifting feel. So just a sport insert was $30. And then back here up front, I have this nice chin spoiler or front lip in carbon fiber. So this lip cost me $450. So just down there somewhere underneath the front clamshell is going to be the heater control unit, which is known to go bad on these cars because they are not sealed. So moisture and water can leak in, they break, and then you don't have a heater and then you don't have a blower. So then I replaced that with a new unit from Lotus, which is sealed, and that was $185. I also have upgraded LED bulbs all around, including the front headlights. So inside these headlights are going to be some Morimoto two-stroke 2.0 LED bulbs. $240 and then at the top of this windscreen behind it is going to be my new zoom carbon fiber rear view mirror and that thing was $250 and then back here in the trunk we have my battery setup and I'm just using a DECA ETX 20L battery so the battery itself was $100 and then the bracket on top of it from really light stuff was also $100 and then just to the left of the battery is my Alpine amp so this amp and the subwoofer and the speakers were the only mods that came with this car it was otherwise completely stock so I guess for the sake of the video we will exclude it from the price list. And these really cool blue tinted extend view mirror lenses from Really Light Stuff. You can kind of see the Alien Head logo. These mirror lenses were 155. And now back here, these LED tail lights from GRP were $585 for the set. Now for the exterior, I have some very select pieces of Expel Ultimate Plus PPF. Like for example, this front clamshell piece here, which protects the actual paint from bug splatters like that. So all in all, all the various PPF pieces like that one, the side sill, and also the piece back here behind the rear wheel, 
uh, including the installation because there's no way I'm putting that thing on myself. It cost me $1,200. All right, one more thing because I'm kind of losing my breath out here. I think I'm almost done with the exterior, suspension, powertrain, and a lot of stuff, and then we can move inside the interior and finally wrap this up. Uh, the last thing for the exterior is also the paint correction and ceramic coating. I have the entire paint all done up, and so that job cost me $1,500. All right, let's get back in here. Now, these Tillet B5 carbon fiber seats, left and right, with the Tillet uh, seat rails, those total to about $3,000. Down here, we have the interconnetic rubber tight floor mats, $60. And then these cool little aluminum floor carpet buttons, or whatever you call them, those are also $60. To better mount these carbon fiber seats is something called a interconnetic six pack because stock, these seats are just threaded directly into this aluminum subfloor, which is pretty unsafe and dangerous. Uh, so anyway, that six pack was 160. And now on the handbrake, you can see this nice aluminum grip in satin. So that grip was $66. And then these satin matching aluminum signal stocks, they were $88. Now let's go ahead and talk about the statement piece inside this interior, which is gonna be this shifter. So this is a Interkinetic Shifter 111, and I bought their alternate package, which includes everything. So obviously the shifter, the cables, the short shifter mechanism in the back of the transmission, this delete panel thing for the buttons, everything. So that entire kit cost me 2100. Now all the custom Alcantara upholstery work, like this door card, the headliner, these dash pods, all that work cost me $1,800 to finish. These carbon fiber door sills left and right, 475. The rear center console, which is back here, which is like a little pocket binnacle thing underneath that towel is uh, 200 bucks. The climate control surround, which is down there, that small little trim piece there, that thing was 150. Now the binnacle cover in matte carbon fiber is $250. All right, so I'm almost done here. Let's go ahead and get to the home stretch. Uh, so because my car is an 07 and I did so much work on the interior, I also had to match an upgrade to the 08 plus. Uh, trim pieces from the Lotus dealership because they have a different sense of soft uh, material on them. So I bought brand new trim pieces and those were, for example, this blinking plate on the left, $85. Blinking plate on the right, $50. The lower column cowl, that thing was $150. The top column cowl, $70. This Lotus cup holder, which is super rare, uh, that thing was $250. And finally, I bought a brand new OA Plus Lotus passenger side airbag cover. And this airbag cover was 300 bucks. Finally, the last two things to note includes this Android head unit, which was $355. And this Gara, whatever you want to call it, IC7 color dash, that thing was $755. Oh my God, that took forever and we're not done yet so now everything i've been adding up so far has just been hard dollar costs on the parts themselves but we are excluding and leaving out a lot of the labor that it takes to actually install some of these parts so i did take some help on some of the items like for example uh the radiator install i had a shop called track spec autosports in fremont take out the front clam do the radiator install do a couple other things like for example the front brake lines uh, and a bunch of other random stuff so i went to them twice the first labor with them was $2,700. The second labor, including an alignment, I actually did an alignment twice on this car, by the way, uh, was about $1,050. And I also have my boy Ezekiel help me out with a few things like installing the header, doing the suspension, etc. There's a lot of things I'm actually leaving out of the list, like for example, all the shipping costs, uh, the tax, some of the fasteners I had to buy, everything like that does add up very quickly. And I'd like to think that my own personal hourly rate is at least a dollar an hour. I myself have probably over 200 hours invested in this car, putting the stuff together. So anyway, the final and total cost of how much it takes to put this car together is what you see on the screen. This is reality, this is how much it costs. And I'm about to collapse myself, not just from seeing the number, but from just how exhaustive and long this process was of adding everything up. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram at Grand Mighty if you want to. And more importantly, now that you know how much the Exige costs to make or put together, if you're seriously interested in buying the car as is, complete, let me know, make me an offer, find me on Instagram, DM me there, email me, message me here on YouTube, whatever you want, uh, and I will sell you the car. So until then, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.